part three. What is a stop, f-stop, step, or exposure value? All those things are basically the same thing and all they are is the unit of measurement for aperture shutter speed, ISO, and also light itself. All right, so here's what I mean. Let's just say we're photographing this room here. It's pretty much well lit for the most part. We got a lamp there, a lamp there, a lamp behind that wall over there, and we even got a softbox here aimed up at the ceiling, and the light is being bounced and just kind of being, it's just filling in some shadow areas down there. So it's pretty much well lit for the most part. All right, so I'm in manual mode right now, and you'll see this bar right here is the exposure compensation bar. These dashes represent stops. So right here, that is one stop darker. This is two stops darker, and that is three stops darker. The little dashes in between the big marks mean thirds of a stop. So this is one third stop darker, and this is two thirds stops darker. And now you can move this along that line. You can see that right now it's at zero, which is where I want it to be, because that means the exposure is good and correct. It's not too dark or too bright. And you can see that there's a minus symbol and plus symbol there in case you didn't see that before. But if we increase the shutter speed, we make our picture brighter. And so now we're at a third of a second and it's one stop brighter, which means we have doubled the amount of light. If we go two stops brighter, we are now at 1.6 of a second and we have doubled the amount of light again. So if we do it again, we're at 1.3 seconds and we double the amount of light yet again. So it gets brighter and brighter and brighter exponentially, basically. Now, um, we have to figure out what, our what we want our settings to be. Because my camera is on a tripod, I already know immediately what I want my settings to be right off the bat. I know that the F number I don't want it to be at f2.8 or something like that because that will give me um, shallow depth of field and when you're photographing architecture that's usually not what you want to do. You usually want everything in the frame to be in focus. So I'm going to move that up to f8 because that's the sharpest point on this lens. Next I know that because I'm on a tripod that the ISO I already want that to be as low as possible because I don't want any grain in the image. So I'm just going to move that to 200. And now the last thing on my mind when I'm, my camera's on a tripod is the shutter speed. So already you can see that I'm just going to move it in order to get it right in the middle. So if I take a picture right now, you can see that it comes out really good. If you zoom in, you'll notice that everything is in focus and everything, it, there's no grain or anything like that. But let's go back. Let's say I wanted to hand hold this shot. Now these are the ideal settings um, if you're on a tripod, but if you're hand holding it and you don't have the luxury of a tripod, then you're going to have to change this up. Automatically, the first thing on my mind now is the shutter speed. I want that to be short because I don't want any motion blur. So right away, I know that I'm going to want that um, no longer than, I would say no longer than a 40th of a second. But just to be safe, I'll just stick it at a 60th of a second. If you're using a really uh, long zoom lens, you would want it to be something like 125th of a second or something like that. Um, but right now, a 60th of a second, I know that if I was hand holding it, that would be okay. That would be pretty much, that would be sharp. Next thing, now that I see that my exposure value bar is many stops to the minus symbol, it means it's going to be very dark if I were to take a picture. I want to let more light in my camera. So I'm going to put that F number all the way down. And even when I did that, it's still off the charts. So now we have one more option, and that is the ISO. I'll bump that up to ISO 1600 and see what that gives me. It's very close to zero. So I would just use that as is and maybe shoot in RAW and maybe bump up the exposure a little bit later on the computer if I have to. But if I was hand holding this shot, this, these are the settings that I would use. So if I take a picture, 
you can see that it's, it's still pretty good. Everything still looks nice, but it's still it's just not as pro as the other one. If you're zooming in all the way, it's just not as good. And this stuff does make a difference. And you can see that even if you go into P mode and then you push the exposure value button on your camera, you can even adjust the exposure value directly right here. Right now it's at 40th of a second, 3.2. If I move that up, a stop, that's going to give me 25th of a second, f2.8, which is double the amount of light. Now, of course, there is one other value that I forgot to mention. Of course, there's aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, and those all adjust the exposure amount, the exposure value. They all make the picture brighter or darker, but of course, we also have light itself. We could turn up that lamp or make it darker, and that would affect our settings in our camera. We you always keep that in mind too. You can add more light by putting in strobes, by getting a reflector, or by letting the sunlight just hit it directly. You can also take away light by removing any of those. So all of those things, in the end, are going to be measured in stops. Now sometimes when you're just in automatic mode and you start taking pictures, it's not going to give you the best result. For example, here we have a scene where there's a window on the right side and just a, a regular room interior on the left side. And now what my camera's trying to do here is try to capture everything in the scene and try to metering it's trying to meter for that. And it can't do that because there's too there's too much of a dynamic range. So it's kind of giving me I don't want to say incorrect um, settings but it's, it may be giving you settings that you don't want. So for example, in this picture, I wanted to capture um, the inside of the room. I wanted this to look nice, but right now it looks way too dark. Over here, you can kind of see the window, but I didn't really want to expose for this outside area. I wanted this part in the scene. So no, what I can do here is if I'm in manual mode or if I'm in some sort of automatic mode and I push the exposure compensation button, I could just raise the shutter speed and now it brings it up to a, a half a second and that just bumped it up two stops. So now this area is well exposed and I can take my picture and I know that what I want to take a picture of is this area is it's going to look nice. And I'm not going to just I'm not going to really worry about that area because I don't care about it. And now you can also do this by changing up the metering mode. So right now, if I just go back to zero here, what my camera is telling me automatically is that this is zero EV. When you're in matrix metering mode, it's trying to capture everything in the frame and correctly expose for it. But you can see that it can't capture everything here because there's too much dynamic range. We have too many bright brights over here and too many dark darks over there. So what we can do now is just change it to spot metering and what spot metering is is that instead of capturing the entire frame and try to trying to give you the correct settings, the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, what it's going to do is that instead of capturing the entire frame, you're going to capture a tiny point and you can move that point anywhere around the frame and let's just say I wanted to put that point right there. So I do that and now I've successfully exposed for this area because I'm telling the camera I want that area to be well exposed. So all that did is move my exposure down two stops and now that is coming out correctly. This picture I was shooting straight into the sun and look at the settings. ISO 200, so there's going to be no noise. Uh, the shutter speed was pretty short, so there's not going to be any motion blur. So the, the waves are going to be very crisp, and I don't have to worry about camera shake. And even F11, which is very, very sharp. So with this picture, the reason why I could get all of those really good settings is because I had so much light to work with. Now in this example, the sun was behind a bunch of clouds, so that darkened it quite a bit. 
and I also took this at six around 6 30 p.m. so it's gonna be a little bit more darker but I'm at f8 here and ISO 200 and about a half a second and when the waves are coming up against the rocks and you're photographing that on a tripod at half a second you're gonna be able to capture some of the movement of the waves same picture but I just um, bumped up the F number so that let in less light in my cameras and that allowed me to increase the shutter speed and I just left the ISO where it was and it's just a few minutes afterwards so here because the shutter speed was longer you can see more of the waves it just recorded all that time of the waves going in and out of the rocks and if you do this even past six seconds say fifteen seconds or thirty seconds it's gonna look like fog going up around the rocks so if you want to take exposures that long you can either wait until nighttime or just use a ND filter in front of your lens which just darkens everything alright now for portraits I like to blow out the background or I just like to make it a lot blurry so right here I used the widest aperture I could that my lens offered at the time and I zoomed in all the way and that just helped me blow out the background then I just did a regular 1 60th of a second in ISO 100 that's pretty normal but check this out why is the house in the background why is that there you always gotta ask questions like that what is your subject of interest the reason why I'm using such a wide aperture in the first place is because I want to make the subject of interest the subject of interest. I want to put all the focus on that subject. So, if you crop the picture, or better yet, take the picture like this in the first place, just screw the background, and maybe even Photoshop it so you kind of blow out the house that was in there. Now the subject of interest is right in your face, you can't miss it and it's just a much more stronger image. And now what if you're in a low light situation but you want your pictures to be sharp, you don't want any motion blur. Um, what you're gonna have to do there is just open up the aperture, raise the ISO, and then shorten the shutter speed to eliminate camera shake. So that's what you're gonna have to do in low light situations like if you're shooting concerts or if you're outside in the city and it's kinda dark. And now what type of metering was used in this? Spot metering. That's right, spot. Because if I use matrix, the background would then try, it would, my camera is going to try to pump up the background and make it brighter because it thinks it's too dark. But really, I want the background dark. I only want the guy's face to be correctly exposed. And then if my camera was still giving me trouble, I could just either adjust the exposure compensation or just put it in manual mode and pet your cat and call it a good day. <coughs> Alright, I can't give any more examples because this video is getting way too long. I gotta hurry it up. If you want to learn more about your camera and how to take good, high quality, well exposed, in focus pictures that you are in control of, you're not going to be relying on the flipping automatic mode on your camera anymore. Because as we just saw in several examples, you can't rely on that thing. You need to know what the settings do and how to use them, what camera to get, what lenses to use, the composition and psychology of imagery, post-production, light, color, and focus, all that good stuff is all going to be covered in this new course that I'm creating that eventually is going to be at that URL right there. So just remember, if you don't even have a DSLR yet, but you're planning on getting one, or you, you've had one for a few months or a few years, but the pictures you're taking aren't coming out as well as you'd like them to be, go to that URL and enter your name and email address so I can send you my course once it's all done.